Ahoy there, YouTube! I'm back again today for another game review. And today I'm very excited for checking out Pirate 21 from Indie Board and Cards. This is for two to six players. Take about 15 minutes to play, and it's for ages 14 plus. And in Pirate 21, you're going to be playing a gamery version of Blackjack, where on your turn you have the option to draw or to pass, but you also have the option to use special abilities, which will be on your cards, both face up and face down. All the while, people are going to be swapping out cards, drawing extra cards, they're going to be attacking your face down cards in the hopes of earning oh so delicious golden doubloons is it good though let's open it up and i'll tell you what i think all right then we're gonna take a look at what you're gonna get inside of pirate 21s first of all we're gonna handy dandy rule booklet it's three small pages double-sided full color full of uh, pictures illustrations examples and it's pretty well done it should have you up and running relatively smoothly it's the kind of thing you'll need it once or twice and probably never need it again unless you screw up the rules like i actually did the first time i played but in Pirate 21, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be playing a game of blackjack, so to speak. It's pretty much is just a straight game of blackjack where you're going to try and get 21. But there's more than that because you are going to have your own special abilities that you will be able to use. You're always going to have uh, at least one special ability. Most of the time, you'll have two or more special abilities that you'll be able to utilize through the game. So what am I talking about? Let's go over the components, and then let's get into the gameplay. So first and foremost, we got these coins. What you're trying to do is get four of these coins. If you can get to four of these coins, then you will win the game. Good for you. Now, Next, you're going to have a handy-dandy little player aid card. And this is, has very small text, which is slightly annoying, but it's very, very useful. It tells you all the different cards in the game, what all the different cards in the game do, and then also what you're going to be doing on your turn. Your goal, incredibly useful player aid card, aside from that teeny tiny little text, which is a little bit of a bummer. Everybody's going to get one of those, so you're going to be getting six of those in the game. Next, you're going to get the stars of the show, which are the cards. And there's going to be a couple different types of cards, but I'll run you through what a card looks like. So it's going to have a number in the upper left-hand corner. That is for blackjack purposes, trying to get to 21. On the bottom, it's going to have a special ability that you'll be able to take once per turn if you choose to take that ability. And I'll just go over all the different abilities in the game because they're all relatively simple. So the pirate is going to allow you to attack an opponent, which means you are going to try and guess their face-down card. Uh, think the guard in Love Letter. If you're successful able to do it then you are going to gain a coin and you automatically do the action called knock which means that the round is about to end after your next turn i'll tell you a little bit more about that later next we have the gunner which is going to allow you to draw two cards keep one face up and discard the other one pretty self-explanatory honestly if you have a gunner in there most of the time you're never just going to take the hit me action because this one gives you a little more flexibility Next, we have the captain. Discard any face-up card and replace it with a new card. Your card, their card, doesn't really matter. Uh, next, you have the mate, which is going to allow you to exchange any two face-down cards between any two players. It doesn't have to be you. So this secret card that you have, you're going to give it to somebody else. That you're going to get their secret card. Or you could just swap two random people's secret cards because you just want to be a jerk. Uh, next, we have the king. If you win the round outright with exactly 21, you win the game. So if you win with 21, then you win the entire game. Uh, uh, I will have my thoughts on the king and the, and the pros and cons. Needless to say, it's on the con side. Uh, but then we have the princess. Cancel a pirate attack. The pirate's player pays you a coin. The princess cannot be the target of a captain's ability. So in essence, you don't want to attack anyone with a princess. Obviously, if it's face up, you're not going to do it. But if it's face down, you won't know that he has the card. And then you think it's still your coin. And those are all the special abilities in the game. Now, one thing I want to mention is that special abilities, oh, there's one more, are not locked into a specific number. So as you can see, if I use the captain special ability to say, ha-ha, he doesn't have a captain face up, then you would know that I have either a two, a four, or a six down here, which would be good if you're doing the pirate. So you are going to have to pay attention to what other people are doing. The last card in the game that I forgot to mention is the black spot. You cannot win the round, gain a coin of eliminated, or you have the lowest total at the end of the round. So if you get eliminated somehow, you gain a coin. Also, if you have the lowest total at the end of the round, you are going to gain a coin. If you have a high number, say for your hits since you hit 21, everybody just ignores your 21, and the next highest player would win the round. But let's show you exactly what you're going to do on your turn, because it is a really simple one action per turn game and actually it tells you right down here what you could do on your turn so the first thing you can do is you can draw aka hit me how do you do that well you just say hit me and then boom you get yourself another card and that's the end of your turn quite simple that's it 
The next thing you could do is you could use one of your abilities. So you can use either your face up or your face down abilities. And by using the ability, you don't lose the card. That's one thing I want to stress. You don't lose the card just for using the special ability. Also, this is not coup, so you cannot lie about what your face down special ability is. It's either you're going to use the gunner or I'm, you're going to use the captain because that is your face down ability. So you cannot lie. So obviously with this gunner, I would draw two cards and then I would keep the one I want. And I'm obviously, uh, ooh, yeah, I'll probably keep the, maybe the princess. I'll keep the princess right there because that's going to have me 16 showing which is a pretty high number which means i might be able to knock next turn so next you can pass uh so if you don't want any, to do anything on your turn you could just pass i don't see this action used too terribly often but it's one that i suppose you could do if you wanted to last but not least you can knock and by knocking that means that you are going to declare that the next time you have a turn will be the very end of the game. So if I knocked right now, I would not get to do anything, but he would take a turn, I would take a turn, and then my last turn would be the end of the game. So my last turn, I would probably go ahead, and I would draw two and keep one and hope I get a low number, and bananas. I just busted because I decided to do that, and woe is me, I would have uh, 23, and he would have, well, he would have... 11. In this particular example, I would obviously try and not bust because I know he's trying to get a low score. So he would get a coin because he did complete his goal of getting a low score. This guy over here, let's pretend he was playing, who has 13 for some particular reason, would get the coin because he has the highest score. Even in this particular example, that's not really that high of a score. Anywho, you're going to rinse, wash, repeat, shuffle them back up, deal them back out, and you're going to go until someone has four coins, at which point they will be the winner of the game. And that, in a nutshell, is how Pirate 21 is... Alrighty then, Pirate 21 from Indie Board and Cards. What are my final thoughts? Let's go over the pros, let's go over the cons. First, on the con side, game's not going to be for everybody for a variety of different reasons. Two to six players is a fantastic player count, but at the same time, I liked it best at the higher player counts. Uh, it just was more high risk, higher reward, because you knew other people were going to get closer to 21, whereas when you're playing at the lower counts, it loses a little bit of its oof, especially if you know potentially that someone has busted, which you definitely can in a two or three player game. So I liked it best at the higher player counts. Another comment kind of I have in this game is there's no theme at all. The theme, completely non-existent. You're get it, trying to get 21 by getting pirates. Why? I don't know. Maybe you're building a ship and you can only have 2,100 pounds of pirates or some crap like that. I don't know. The theme, completely non-existent. It's just like, oh, I have special ability. The fact that it's pirates, it could be anything. Like, literally, they could re-theme this a la Love Letter to be about anything. Uh, trading elephants, uh, fighting with magic, uh, killing your neighbors. I don't know. Whatever they want to retheme it to, they can do it. So the theme completely does not come across. Another comment I have in this game, this is a big, 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 giant, glaring, like uh, something big theme, uh, problem with this game is the five card. The king card is stupid. It's dumb. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. It almost makes me give this a negative review, specifically just for this king card. This king card lets you win the game. It's just, hey, you got 21. You got the king. Good for you. You win the game. Wait, what? Not the round? You don't gain, like, double coins or anything like that? No, it's just the game's over. He won. He got 21. Well, that's the object of the game, right? Everybody's trying to get 21. Well, no, but he's got this special card. And since he's got the special card and he got 21, then he wins the game. And you're like, oh, well, that's kind of stupid. And then everybody's like, yeah, that, that is kind of stupid. And that's pretty much the consensus that everybody I played with came to. I played this with 10-year-olds in my classroom. I played this with my game night. And I played this with another game group. And every single person agreed that that card is stupid and dumb. Because here's the thing. I don't mind cards and games or powers and games that allow you to win the game outright but they need to be incredibly challenging you have to go above and beyond perform some herculean task in order to win the game outright and this game's just like oh you did what you were trying to do you got 21 good for you you win the entire game and i just i hate 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 that now we house ruled it and it pretty much uh, we house ruled it right from the jump on each one. I would be like, all right, I want to play a game with this rule in place. So I'm not going to tell you what the thing is. Uh, and then we're going to switch it up. And what I, we did, which I liked a lot better, was the fact that we made it so that you won two doubloons. So if you get 21, you get two doubloons instead of just winning the freaking game outright. Now, I know that's going to be a nitpick. Some people are like, but it's only a 15-minute game. Uh, but still, I, I, I hate that. I hate it so freaking much, man. 
Any other comments I have with the game? Oh, the the text on these cards is incredibly stinking tiny. These player reference cards are absolutely fantastic, the information on them. So big thumbs up on these, but the text on them is just, oh, 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 so small. Last kind I have with this game is that, you know, I wish there was more special abilities in the game. The game does get repetitive after a while, especially if you're playing at those higher player counts because you're going to play round after round after round after round until somebody gets four doubloons. And this game absolutely can outstay its welcome. Like I, While I liked it best at the higher player counts, gameplay-wise, I did not like the length of the game gameplay-wise. Uh, I didn't like the length of the game when you went to those higher player counts. Any other cons I have with the game? Theme, that stupid five card, small text, very light, very simple, repetitive. It's not going to be for everybody. But moving on to the pros, I enjoyed Pirate 21 for what it was. It's a light, simple game, and it scratches a lot of the itches that I like. It's easy to learn. It's easy to teach. It's short. It's a good filler weight game, and it plays up to six players. It's the kind of game where you can have it out, and you can have it taught relatively quickly, especially if you're playing with gamers. It's just, hey, we're playing blackjack. You're trying to get to 21. You also can use these special abilities. Look at your player aid card. Read the card, and you'll pretty much know how to play the game. And I like that aspect of the game, and that's why I'm still very lukewarm recommending this game to some people. I could see this being a game that a lot of people really enjoy, especially if you like blackjack or if you play with someone who maybe want to get into the hobby to play like play to who likes to play blackjack. That's what I'm trying to say here. Um, so what else did I like about this game? I did like the artwork of the game. You know, I'm not an artwork guy, but I think the artwork is well done. I like the special abilities in the game, especially at the higher player counts. They were interesting. They were diverse, even though I definitely think there needed to be more special abilities or alternate special abilities or something like that. And hopefully in the future they will do this. Um, but yeah, that, that's what I got to say about the game. I liked certain aspects of the game and overall, I just barely enjoy this game more than I don't enjoy the game. But that's only with the house rule. If you're making me play with that stupid regular rule with the king and the five and they win the game automatically, then this goes to a negative review. That's like that's the tipping point right there. That's where I am on this game. It's not one that I'm going to recommend to too many people. But if it looks interesting to you, if you like blackjack, if you feel like you would play this with someone who likes blackjack but maybe isn't a hobby game, then yes, I can recommend you check this game out. But for everybody else, I don't think Pirate 21 is going to be good enough to, to really recommend. I just, uh, I think there's other games out there that play at this weight and this time length that have more meat on the bones. They have better interesting decisions and they don't have a stupid card that, while I will not say is broken, but I will say is so stupid! Why? Why? God, how did that get through playtesting? Everybody in playtesting thought that was a good idea? Really? Really? Who is this? Jeremy and Franklin. Everybody in playtesting was really happy with that five card. They were like, man, that five card is super cool because I'm always in the game. That's what people thought because that's not what we thought at all. But if you played this game, let me know in the comments below. What do you think of that card? Uh, and as always, if you're enjoying this content, please try to click on the subscribe button. Let me know what you think about that card. If you played the game or if you've not played the game, maybe it's just me being me because I know some people are going to say, Oh, Bauer, it's just a 15-minute game. What's it matter if you got a win, every, win, win card? It's just, it's just the fact that those cards are supposed to be special. They're supposed to be precious. And in this game, they're not precious at all. There's two freaking cards of that. There's two of those cards. And they're really easy to achieve, especially if it's your face down and no one screws with your face down card. But I'm done. I'm done. I actually recommended this game. Remember? That was, that was me. Uh, but yeah, I'm lingering here. As always, thanks for your time, YouTube.